Today on a haunting episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. When a beloved grandmother passes away at the tender young age of 68, does her spirit pass on to heaven? Or with her to the flames of the underworld? Or maybe, just maybe, she decided to stick around for just a little longer to try out her daughter's brand new exercise bike. It is a visit from the dead like no other on this chilling episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Yeah, that it is. And uh, if you like the show, check out our uh, Patreon page. Uh, go to uh, patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Uh, or our website, ghostpodcast.com. Get access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, all of it commercial free. You can binge away in it. Our ebook, our audiobook, Amazon Audible bestsellers. So you get all of it when you're an extra podcast person. And EPP, all the, ad, all the uh, shows, commercial free, no ads ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? Okay, so last week you and I were talking about my murder she shed. Yeah, yeah. And the I keep bird feeding in there. And I think we were talking about that on the other podcast. On Dark Side do, of. On the Dark yep, Side of. Yep. So I go out one day to put bird feed in my bird feeders and I have the murder she shed which is a a shed in my backyard right next to my really nice shed with electricity mm-hmm. but it's really kind of creepy like I've found crutches in there and mm-hmm. it's like it's just a creepy old shed so I keep the bird feed in there in a container I make sure it seals every time because I'm really freaked out by rodents and so I go out there last week and like something has chewed a big hole in it. Like, I don't know, I'd say six inches in diameter. Mm -hmm. So it could be mice, like really busy little mice. So, so needless to say, like I have ignored it. I haven't gone in the murder. She said, I'm haven't fed the birds. I feel kind of bad about that, but I cannot bring myself to open that because I'm afraid something will jump out at me. Mm -hmm. So this morning I get up to let my dog out and I look out there and and I sent Tony a picture of it. And in fact, I posted it on our uh, Real Ghost Stories group page. But the blue bin that the like probably 15 pounds worth of bird feed is in Mm -hmm. is like probably 10 to 12 feet away from where it was inside the murder she shed. Now it's out of my yard. Mm -hmm. What? What? Like... What? <laughs> like, who or what did that? Like, I'm like, I guess a raccoon, maybe, like, probably, I don't know. A group I think of a raccoons. possum would be a stretch. I, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, how heavy is that Even? container? What's that? Is it heavy? Probably 15 pounds because okay. the container doesn't weigh anything, no, but, but yeah. it's a pretty new, it's a 20 pound bag of bird sure. feed, and I okay. probably put out five pounds it takes a little strength there I, maybe a group of raccoons working together all you know squeaking at each other that would other have been and, adorable yeah. i would have loved to see that yeah they're probably you know carrying it together and then after the words they all they held pause and they danced around in a circle you know a little bit back so and forth yeah that's probably what they did because i'm like this morning i looked out there and i'm like what the hell drug that out 10 12 feet from where it was inside the shed you know, if you had like a, a camera or something out there, you could have seen the raccoons doing the party. They probably even had a little barbecue, probably had a pinata, uh, probably um, just, you know, had a g- good old time. They probably had a campfire, <laughs> drank a couple beers. Um, you know, it might have been karaoke, possibly volleyball. Possums came by and they're like, yeah. hey, F you guys, this is our feast. Yeah. You didn't help move it out here 12 feet. Yeah. You missed all yeah. of that. All of that. Once they got that thing, they're like, all right, it's party time. You know, it happens. So I, did, I was like, is it raccoons, is it possums, or is it demons? I don't know. Raccoons, possums, or demons. Or demons. What if it's demonic raccoons that got a curse put on them by the possums? Well, because remember that one day that I found that really large dead raccoon in my yard? Yeah. 
what killed it. I don't know. I think the possums may have been practicing black magic. You know, sometimes because possums yeah. don't eat raccoons, so black magic is the only thing that makes sense. I swear to God, I there's sometimes at night when I come home, uh, I'll be driving down the the country road here, and you see possums, and and if you stop and you watch them for a moment, you see they they like to go to dusty areas and they walk in the shape of a pentagram over and over until it's just. <laughs> It's ground into the soil. And then a, a little innocent raccoon comes along, yeah. walks into the middle of it. There you go. Oh, my God. And those red eyes. I mean, they they will look at the raccoons and they will scare them. And they will. Yeah. I mean, similar. I mean, I, I've seen it. I've seen raccoons where they it's it's horrible. The horrible things that those possums do to those raccoons. There's so many nights in my backyard. Oh, my God. I. I don't even want to say what I've seen happen. What some of the horrific, horrific scenes of possums crucifying raccoons <laughs> by the creek and, and throwing and, bird feed at them and laughing. They're hanging from their tails in the trees and they're like they're throwing bird feed at them and acorns as they sit there and they watch the water line slowly rise at, at, to the raccoons that are. They've they've wrapped up uh, their their arms and their paws uh, to to sticks in the trees and the water rises because they dammed it up the river and they have an agreement with the beavers and and the beavers are like all right we'll fucking do that for some money and then the beavers let it flood and in all all of it then you have these these poor raccoons that that suffer it, it's 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 disturbing it's sad. Um, and that's happening nightly in my my backyard. I wouldn't say <laughs> nightly, but I would say possibly every other night. Possibly. Yeah. The thing is, on, uh, very soon. Uh, so <laughs> now, all I can see in my head is really sad looking raccoons. <laughs> They're like, looking at the camera like, help me. That are tied I'm up. Sad yeah, raccoons. That are tied up with uh, grapevine and sitting in, in a creek while possums uh, go and unleash the dam uh, upriver. Sort of shit happens. <laughs> this is I tell you now, nobody, you know, nobody watches like Nat Geo anymore. Or Wild Kingdom. This is the stuff you used to see. Then you see the kids cry. Why? It's, it's animals on TV. Why are you crying? The possums flooded the raccoons and killed them. Well, that's nature, honey. It's time for bed. Have a graham cracker. Um, eight five five eight five three forty eight zero two is our phone number. Thanks for solving my problems. Yeah, it's what I do. Uh, at uh, Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Uh, let's go over to our first story. It says, I have never been sensitive in my life this far other than an instance of hearing someone say my name in my ear when no one was home one Halloween. I've never seen anything such as a ghost apparition. I do, however, come from a family who has practiced witchcraft once upon a time. And I find that I'm extremely intuitive. Sometimes it's a bit creepy. Anyway, my story isn't creepy at all, not super ghostly or anything like that, but still something new. So here you go. In October of 2020, my grandma, who was 68 years old, passed away of a heart attack. She was going through kidney failure and a, her heart was giving out as well. So although it came as a shock, we knew she was sick. She was my best friend for all 25 years of my life until she passed. And I was not ready for her to leave so suddenly. Two days after my grandma's passing, my stepdad, who was almost 50, passed away also of a heart attack. His death was more surprising and unexpected. A couple months after all of this, my mom had a weird experience. She has a Peloton bike. And if you don't know how they work, you ride the bike and watch the screen as you ride. So one day, she was about to take a shower. She turned her speaker on to connect it to her phone and said, disconnecting from Peloton. My mom never connects that speaker to the Peloton. Later on, she went to ride the bike and the seat was moved back as if a taller person was on it. She has her seat in one spot. As you lock it into place, it's like a regular bike, so it would never move on its own. This is actually something that has happened many times since this incident. Side note, this bike was originally bought for my stepdad because he was an avid bike rider all his life. She found both these happenings odd. Later on that evening, she was lying in bed with her eyes closed when she felt a hand on her hand, uh, a hand on her hand. It felt like my stepdad's hand to her. 
She says she opened her eyes and could see a cloudy haze above her. Then she could hear my stepdad's voice in her head telling her he's okay and he loves her. He then said he had to go for good. She never had the experience again. A few months later, she decided to do a session with a medium who met many of the widows in a widow Facebook group she belongs to have spoken with and recommended. In the session, they only spoke on the phone. He had no connection to her Facebook page or anything other than info she shared with him. First thing he told her was that he could see many or see her stepdad. He said he liked what she was doing with her hair. She stopped blow drying it straight every day since he passed and wears it natural more often now, something she never did before. Then the medium said he saw my stepdad holding a baby and I kept saying it was a boy. My mom had never had a miscarriage with him in the past, but in June of 2020, I did. So my mom believes that was my baby. My stepdad was holding. The medium also mentioned someone in the family crying out for American Idol and that my stepdad said to do it again. That was me. I tried out when I was 15, but haven't attempted since. There are other things pertaining to my stepdad that he said, but I can't recall all of it. Then the medium said he saw a woman smoking a cigarette and she was really happy. My mom knew right away that was my grandpa because my grandpa smoked for many, many years before she quit in her mid-30s. She never smoked again, but always said she missed it and would love to do it again. We've had other instances occur, like lights flickering all over the house, but we think it's just electrical. My mom still experiences her bike seat moving back, but no one uses it but her. I don't have experiences, but I did have sleep paralysis after my grandma died for the first time in my life. I would have I felt like nightmares, or she'd be in my dream and everyone around me would act like she was alive, but I'd be screaming that it wasn't her. Or I'd run into the grocery store, but it wouldn't be her, just someone who looked just like her. I often wonder why she doesn't visit me like my mom has been visiting my stepdad, because we were extremely close. I did spend the days leading up to her unexpected death with her, and I remember little key moments that I look back at now and believe were inklings into her death. Without sounding like I'm rambling at this point, I just wanted to let you know that I started listening to your show in March of 2021, and it's been one of my favorite ways of coping with my grief. Even though I'm a tiny bit more scared for the dark now, for some reason, listening to stories about ghosts and people's family members visiting them gives me hope that maybe my grandma will eventually visit me too. I'll definitely write in if that happens, although I have no reason to say. Fuck the Dallas Cowboys. I will say, what the hell is up with these men not believing us about weird paranormal shit? I love you guys and what you do. I follow Harper on TikTok, and she's adorable. Thanks for reading this. Megan. Did Megan really add the part about the yes. Cowboys? Yes. Oh, that totally sounds like something that you would say, but at the same time, it surprised me because you don't normally talk about no, it. No, no. We have another listener that always says it at the end of his uh, letters. Oh, that's funny. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. So I think she must have, you know, heard that in a recent episode and is just referencing. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yep. 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 But outside of that, I thought that was a really awesome story, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I just, those are the kind that I love the most. But I think it's really interesting, like, was there any doubt with these people that, that that he was coming through to them? Because it was like, that was times 10, times 100 what the normal person would get. I was amazed at how specific it was. Where it's like, and try out again for American Idol. <laughs> right? Like, who has that in a, say, or a, a reading, you know? I mean, that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And kind of a random thing. I mean, I, 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 that doesn't seem like when you, I mean, I, this is where they got to really look and go, what have you told the person that's giving you the reading beforehand? Do they know anything about that? Because that's a kind of a random thing to be like, someone tried it for American Idol. Like, I don't know, your odds are probably not the greatest on that. Like, they're very specific, too. Yeah. And the holding a boy and like, oh, and the hair thing. Like, mm-hmm. you did your hair different. Mm -hmm. I like your hair. Now that's really specific because very, but sometimes, you know, I get it that you can be talking to someone and you can give them clues Mm -hmm. that 
you might not even realize you're giving them. I get all that. Yeah. But what were the odds of you going, sitting down for your reading and going, excuse me, I just got my hair redone. Yeah. I don't know. So it just sounds super, like, legit. Like, I really believe all this stuff happened. It's just amazing yeah. to me that you get that much. There's a uh, a docu-series on Netflix right now that I've been watching. I'm trying to find it. Um, It's all about uh, death and... um like just kind of like the the pr- surviving death is what it's called and it's a very interesting series they talk about all different uh kind of facets of this if you like this show you'd probably like that they're not paying for this by the way i'm just saying it's a good show um and, and it talks about everything from mediums to near death experiences seeing dead people reincarnation and it's from a real scientific standpoint but it's a standpoint that that recognizes the possibility that these things are indeed happening um, and that there's not really much of an explanation, uh, but it does try to go into like, and, and it really shows you how some of these things are being studied. It really opened my eyes because I didn't realize how in depth and how professionally some of these things are being studied um, because people are obviously finding it very, very fascinating. Um, so it's an interesting one to watch. I'm going to check that out because it's like with so many people having experiences, mm-hmm. it just seems like, you can only for so long go, yeah, that's not real. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... They- and the people who say it who say it isn't real are the people, they've never had anything like that. I mean, mm-hmm. some people have not had experiences and totally believe it's real. But most of the people who are skeptical have never had an experience. It was, it was super fascinating because, I mean, they, they, they talk to a lot of folks, like the same type of folks we talk to here, uh, where they work in... Uh, like assisted living care and and really heard some interesting stories of just, we don't know how to explain what happened here. Um, And and a lot of it really kind of spoke to a lot of things I've said over the years where it's like, there's a mix of two things going on here. There's a mix of, you know, your brain shutting down, hallucinating. It's just kind of what we do, but there's also something else that plays at the same time. And, those of us who are alive and healthy on the outside are trying to go, what part is this is, is the, the brain and what part is the supernatural thing? And it's really hard to tell because the lines are very blurred at that moment of death, essentially. And, uh, they, but there, there's moments where they really dissect some of this. And, and I, and I try to identify exactly those two different things. So anyway, that's a pretty good free endorsement. Out. It's uh, <laughs> it was it's uh, it is a good one. I do like it. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Uh, we let's go more to the we got the Claudia story, right? Claudia did the she was on two episodes last week, and she still has more to her story. Should we hear another part? Oh, yeah. We did have two parts last yep. week. Her name was Claudia. I believe. I can't, I can't remember what her name was. We'll find out. Here we go. Hi. Uh, so picking up from where I last left off, uh, having the experience of the angel hovering behind me pushed back into my body after the vision. Uh, so I heard that boy say, remember what you experienced last year. God is always with you. So as soon as I experienced that, I take two steps forward because I wanted to see this spirit close up. I was that bold. I was so bold and courageous, not realizing how dangerous this was. I would never recommend anybody to do this. Reminding everybody who's listening, please don't do this if you ever experience a supernatural or even a paranormal experience. Don't get bold. I was ignorant. I stepped two steps forward, not knowing if this spirit can possibly hurt me. But I take two steps forward after hearing this voice tell me, but then again, if God is with you, who is against you? So (laughs) that's my, uh, that's my philosophy, not even my philosophy. That's my spiritual belief. And I had the experience because like I said, I had that vision that it was now I realized that was an angel hovering behind me, encouraging me not to be fearful. But I don't recommend that to anybody because not everybody is prepared for something like that. Now I had experienced, like I said, something prior to this 
experience a year before, but I'm not even going to get into that because that was a really intense experience. Um, anyways, uh, so I take two steps forward once I'm like shoved right back into my body because it was a vision, but it was a supernatural experience. I'm shoved back into my body and I got courageous. I got bold. I take two steps forward. I'm like, I want to see this, this, whatever this this thing is that I'm looking at it's a it's a supernatural being I wasn't afraid take two steps forward and as soon as I take two steps forward this thing that's standing behind the tree glides it's not even running it's gliding and it glides to the end of the path now that from where it was Behind that tree to the end of the path is about, ooh, I'm going to say about maybe 35 feet. And I love math, so it must have glided like 35 feet from the from where it was to where it ended at the end of the path. It went back down the area it came from, from where it was following this older couple. About 35 feet, it glided. It didn't even run because if it ran, and this is what I thought to myself, when I saw it glide from the tree that it was staring at me and my brother, in law brandon it glided all the way down to the other end of the path from where it came from and if you're good if you're gonna run that fast even if a an olympic track star was to run that fast you're gonna hear crunching of gravel you're gonna see the dirt pick up like a dirt dust you're gonna see some sort of evidence that something was running that fast there was no dirt dust if you're gonna if you're gonna run that fast there has to be evidence that even the dirt is gonna lift up and it's gonna create some sort of dust trail and even then you're gonna hear the gravel under your feet and we heard neither the, the gravel crunching under the feet and we didn't see any dust trail so and the way that this thing glided from point A to point B was not humanly possible, not even by a track star. So as soon as I saw that, I looked at my my sister's baby daddy, Brandon, and I was like, did you see that? Did you see that? And he says, yeah, like he was so shocked. He couldn't even believe what he had just seen. And this dude is, he's a, he's a hard ass. He likes to pretend like he's, he's real tough and whatnot. I've never seen this guy scared, but that day I saw him scared. So even though seeing him scared and we saw this thing glide, this thing that had no face, no physical features whatsoever, it was just black. I was the one who was like, hey, let's go down there. Let's go look at it. Let's go see what happened. What was that? So we start walking and I convinced and not even really convinced, but I convinced my my sister and my nephew's father, Brandon, to go down there to the end of the path where I last saw the spirit. Because I just couldn't believe it, honestly. So we go to the to the end of the path, and when we get to the end of the path, I had noticed there's nothing down there. It's just another little field encompassed by the woods. So it's a field encompassed by the woods. And I'm thinking, where the hell did this thing go? But even even though I knew what I saw, I didn't want to believe it. I'm still trying to find, you know, some sort of reason to what I saw. But I hadn't realized when I ended down at the end of the path that I had been standing on top of a bunch of rocks. And I had realized, because I was so enthusiastic to find out what it was that I was looking for, I'm looking down and I realize that I'm standing up on a bunch of rocks. Now these rocks were shaped in the form of, of of a casket. That's the only way I can describe it. It was about seven feet in length and maybe three feet in width and it was perfectly set. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, what the hell am I? And I realize maybe I'm standing on top of somebody's grave. So I get off and this is exactly where the spirit had disappeared so i disregarded that and i looked at brandon and i said hey brandon i was like let's go into the woods let's let's go find this thing and he looked at me and he said this is the point and this is the part in a in a scary movie where somebody says to another person 
hey, like, we're about to die. Don't go in the woods. Like, this is stupid. And I look at him and I'm like thinking to myself, what a sissy. Like, is, is he serious? And so, but I, I was like, you know what? Maybe he's not prepared for this. That's cool. So I let it go. So I'm like thinking to myself, like, what the hell did he mean by that? Like, this is a part of a movie where where somebody says you're about to die. Like, I I was just like really, I was really confused by that. But um, he had actually a good point. If I would have gone looking for whatever it was, would have been bad, I'm sure. But uh, we went to explore the rest of the area. We found a, a water well, and this water well actually dated back to like the early 1800s. This is where before everything became, uh, you know, pipelined, because that's how they do things nowadays, where it's like well developed. Back in the days, they used to rely on wells. So this this well, we're actually standing at the well, and at the well, there was an actual podium that had history. There was a a podium that had the history to the podium. Oh, I'm sorry. There was a podium that had history to the well itself. And this well dated back to like early 1800s. And now what happened on that property? I don't even know. From what I understand, Brandon told me somebody died in the barn in some sort of fire. And maybe that had to do with whatever was haunting the property. But a I'd say about like a few years, actually not too long after I started researching it. And there's a, uh, there's a grave site on the property. And that's where that one ends. It ended kind of perfectly. And there's a grave site on the, on the property. property. Yeah. Next chapter. Yeah. Um, okay. So what kind of cracks me up in all of that is like Brandon is actually being the voice of reason. And she's like, I don't get, I did not understand what you meant by that. How do you not get that part? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the voice of reason. Yeah. Brandon. You yeah. Know, exactly. You don't run in the woods. That's when all the bad shit happens. Yeah. It's like every one of those movies where, you know, like people are being murdered or chased by something. They all run to the wrong places. Mm -hmm. It's like, why? Why are you running to the basement? Always bad shit happens in the basement. Yeah, you gotta, in the forest, always bad shit happens. You gotta think of like the most like I don't know like wh where's the place that never is shown in the movies where people get get killed? Is there any place that's still like that this hasn't happened then in some sort of teen horror movie? Well, where, where would I mean, you pretty run? Much every place, but we all know a forest is full of murders and and creepy shit. So where would you run? Outside, because when I was a kid. um, because I was in the house. Uh -huh. And so when I would get really, really scared, if it was daytime, mm -hmm. I would run out of the house. Okay. And at nighttime, I would be too scared, mm -hmm. like, to just move. Or like that one time we heard something walking across the porch and knock on our door and there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you didn't really want to run outside at night either. And, you know, you're right. I mean, but, when you think of like the horror movies and stuff, too, anybody who goes back into the house is dead. The only, dead. Yeah, the only ones who ever... They always yeah. like, they'll run into a... In, like, they run up the stairs. I'm like, no, yeah. just run outside. Yeah. But if you run outside and then run and keep going into a forest, mm -hmm. that's really bad. Yeah, I think you just keep you trying and just keep running in in the street lights as long as you can, and then it'll get the attention of something else sooner or later, and then you'll be at the last scene of the movie going, "Oh, they survived!" Yeah, and I just ran that way uh, over. I yeah, I went to yeah, I went to Little Caesars. I had a couple. Uh, I had a thing of crazy exactly. bread. Felt safe in Little Caesars. What do you mean everybody's dead? Oh my God! No, I was just having a pizza. I was. I brought all this crazy bread back for everybody. I thought we could all share. I got marinara. I got garlic dipping sauce. Are you fucking serious? That's Jody's head. No way. Fuck. That doesn't look very good. No, that's not. A, is that an arm? Painful. Oh my God. Well, what am I supposed to do with all these crazy breads? I mean, this is a lot of. This, how many carbs this is? This is a lot of fucking carbs. <laughs> And if you missed the Claudia's, um, because there was two other parts to this story, and yeah. you can listen back to last week. Yep. Um, we had those on there, but it was basically they were taking a walk and they, um, 
there was another older couple walking towards them and they saw this black, black figure behind them. And then what the other people kind of turned around and looked at it and they saw it and they took off running. And then she saw it behind a tree mm-hmm. and it was like this black figure thing that didn't have a face or just like a black thing, which is pretty creepy. Yeah. <clears throat> there is I think a- it was the middle of the day. <clears throat> yeah. There is a part four and, um, We'll do that at uh, the end of the next episode. <clears throat> and then I think it wraps up Claudia's um, mini series that she sent us. <clears throat> but it's been an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, series uh, of, of events. A mini where, series. Yeah, it kind of is. Do we know what a mini series is? Like, do they, they even have mini series anymore on TV? I mean, essentially, that's what we have on, you know, it's, it's all limited series on, is what we call them now, I think. Limited series on Netflix or Hulu or whatever. I don't even know if we call it that. It's just, there was just one season. <laughs> I think it's limited kind of series out. is the term, though, but I think everybody just says there's only one season of that, you know, but it's um, like, like I know they said the uh, like 1886 uh, or whatever it was. 83. 83 was limited, se- or a limited release, limited something. I don't know. Limited yeah, edition. I think it goes on to 1930 something. I think yeah. there's another one, but it's a whole nother time period but it's tim mcgraw and his beard is really white and really really long and he's actually this strange man that that uh, lives uh near the yellowstone under a bridge and the local children think he's a troll but he uh, he plays this weird country music that sounds strangely of the future it's a really interesting and show i can't wait to- things like she had a barbecue stain on her white t-shirt yeah and people are like, what did he mean by that? What is a barbecue stain on a white t-shirt? I mean, what is this strange? He's talking in code. I Please don't, don't take the girl. Where's he going to take her? I'm not quite sure what, what this man is. <laughs> this sounds like a hoedown underneath the bridge. What's going on? <laughs> what is this music of the devil? Oh, my God. Sweet Jehovah. Oh my god, that troll! What's a coke? That oh my god, yeah. So, don't miss it. Tim McGraw returns in 1936. Only on Paramount Plus Negative Greater Than Sign. <laughs> Available exclusively on Roku devices pre-2015. Sold at Sam Goody's in the northeastern <laughs> part of the United States from Paramount Plus negative sign greater than. Good luck watching it. I'm an Indian outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that made me laugh. I, I said because it's funny for how popular that series is, how difficult it was to find it initially because it was like, where is it? Where can I find this? And it's still confusing. To like watch the old ones versus the new ones, very. Uh, there's a lot of agreements I'm sure that were in place there, but it it certainly did not make a lot of sense to the public. All right, that's going to wrap up today's episode of the program. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, all of it's commercial free and help keep us on the air. Until next time for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.